Hi. In this short video cast, I would like to quickly demonstrate how the Juno Space SDK uh, enables application developers who may or may not have networking engineering background to build network aware applications using any programming language that knows how to consume uh, RESTful services. As you might know, Juno Space SDK is targeted not only towards uh, networking engineers who may have programming experience, but more importantly towards uh, application developers who may not have that uh, networking engineering experience, thereby enabling enterprises and individuals alike to build network-aware applications quickly and effectively without having to worry about the plumbing aspects of the networking stack. Now, because the Space SDK is exposed as RESTful APIs, one can program against those APIs using any programming language or platform that knows how to consume RESTful APIs. This includes languages such as C, C++, Java, including .NET, thereby opening up the platform to enterprises who may already have existing IP assets in those programming languages and models. So last week, as I was talking to a few of my buddies uh, about Space SDK, they were all very excited. Uh, one of the questions I got asked uh, over and over again is, how would I be able to tap into Space SDK using uh, my existing .NET skills? So in this video, I will attempt to quickly show that interop capabilities of the Space SDK using .NET 4.0 through a couple of simple examples. So let's get started. On my laptop, I already have installed uh, the Space SDK binaries. I have the emulator running in my uh, virtual box, as you can see here. The virtual box is hosting the, uh, an image of space, and that image is hosting two virtual uh, devices, two virtual Juniper devices. In addition to this, I have the space web application that comes out of the box with the Space SDK. This application allows me to do various things including managing devices, discovering devices, and also viewing devices that are already running in the emulator. So as you can see here, I have uh, two virtual Juniper devices running on this space uh, emulator that we will discover later again through our program. So this is a, a fantastic tool to have, especially if you're getting started, you want to uh, look at the devices that are running and understand some of the statistics behind those uh, devices, the performance of those devices, where they are up and running, etc. So it's a fantastic tool to have. It, it's actually a fantastic tool also uh, for debugging purposes if you are to build applications, and I use it a lot. Okay, let me pull up an application called REST Client. So this one is running on Firefox. So what this does is it allows you to quickly query the space emulator using the space APIs. As I was saying earlier, all of the space SDK APIs are exposed through RESTful APIs, RESTful model. What that really is, is it's uh, as simple as doing a HTTP POST or HTTP GET to be able to send requests for data or send requests for actions against the space emulator. So it's really easy, simple to use, and really no fuss. So let's use this particular command here. This is one of the Space SDK APIs or Space SDK commands. By the way, the Space SDK documentation is really comprehensive. Every single command is documented very well. It's easy to understand and consume. I've chosen this particular example because it's, it's fairly easy to demonstrate what we're trying to accomplish here. Okay, so let's use this command. And really what this command does is it should pull back the two virtual devices we saw in the space application that I showed you earlier in this uh, video cast. So let's submit this HTTP GET command. And, but before I do that, let me log in and attach the credentials to this request and hit send. As you can tell, it shows the command was successful, and here's the output of the base SDK. As you can tell, this is formatted using JSON format, which is great. I think a lot of programmers out there are now using JSON model. Uh, if you are an XML addict like myself, you're probably thirsting for XML format, which is fairly easy to to get from Space SDK. Space SDK is very much capable of spitting out results in an XML data format. Really, all you need to do to get this data in the XML format is to attach an accept header.
And then this is the expected value for the accept header so that we can ask for the XML format in the output. So now let's send the uh, command using again HTTP GET. Only difference between the last time and this time is we are attaching the accept header with the value that we want it to be in XML format. There it is. Now we have the same data only formatted in the XML format, which makes me really happy. Okay, so this is all great, but you ask, this demo still does not show me how to get this all done through .NET. Um, so let me show you a quick and dirty example using a good old .NET console application. So I have my Visual Studio over here, uh, Visual Studio 2010. So let's open up an example that I wrote earlier just to save time. All right, so this is a simple console application. It doesn't do really anything fancy. All it does is exactly what we did through the REST client using our .NET code. So let me quickly walk through what we are do doing here. So we have our main entry point, which basically calls the method, calls base SDK, nothing fancy. What we're doing here is we're using an open source .NET library called Hammock, which is really cool for REST application development. So I use it all the time. It's really easy to work with. You don't have to use Hammock. You could actually use a standard HTTP request or web client, whatever makes you happy. Now, I use Hammock because it's a lot easier to work with. So what I'm doing here is really creating a credential object. I'm attaching the username and password. Then I'm creating a REST client, which is a, a class inside Hammock. And I'm attaching the command that we sent earlier through that client. So it's as simple as attaching that command to the authority property of the REST client object. We are attaching the accept header and adding that accept header to the client, the REST client object. And the content here, the value here, is exactly the same value we used uh, in the REST client example we, we saw earlier. Now, the next one is really we are attaching the credentials to the request. We are creating a REST request object and then attaching the credentials that we created up here to the request object. Very simple. Here comes the action. We are basically calling take this request and submit that request for me. That request goes to the emulator through the SDK and the response from the SDK comes back to us in the REST response object called response in this example. And if everything went well, the HTTP status code would be OK and the results of the command will be available to us in the request.content property of the response object. It's really easy to do what we did in REST client through this console application. So let's quickly run this. Again, this one, there's nothing fancy here. We are basically calling the request or, or the command and dumping the output that we got from the SDK into our console window. It's nothing fancy. It's exactly what we did through the REST client, only through .NET programmatically. But the output looks ugly. So you're telling me that that's it? This is all you got? Well, not really. So let me show you another application, another example that shows the power of uh, Space SDK and build really rich client applications. So let's quickly show you how this, how this is all wired up inside the code behind. So this we already know. So let me close this guy off and let me pull up the, the front end. This data is actually attached to my sample data here. So let me pull that up here. This is only for designing the application at runtime, it actually pulls the live data from the emulator and, I'll, and we'll walk through that in a minute here. But basically, let's say test, I'll call it demo test for the family. Let's call this uh, uh, IP address, let's say 253 and name, let's call it, or let's call it Nagi's uh, home security device. So let's save this. Let's go back to our XAML here. As you can tell, the the data is refreshed in here. Now again, this is the sample data that I use for the actual designing of the application and the UI, but at runtime, what the application does is it pulls that XML from Space SDK, and that's the XML that will be used for painting the front end to these, these visuals. So let's run this application. Uh, let's go back here. Remember, we set it to uh, the data being 192.168.1.253. That's just the dummy data, but in real time, 
when I do get devices, that's the actual data coming from Space SDK, which is not the same as the design data. Let's go back to the code. I would like to show you a couple of more examples um, in terms of uh, how are we doing these images? How do we paint the image depending on what type of application that is? So what I have here is a, a folder called images and I have a, a subfolder called devices and I have an image representing each of the device type. At runtime, what I do is using the power of data binding, we get the name of the, the device type and then pull the corresponding image of that device and associate that image as the source for this image visual element. It's as simple as that. So I can actually quickly show you. So here's a XAML. If you are a Silverlight or WPF developer, all of the visual is rendered using and designed using XAML. It's sort of like HTML really for visual. So let me go over to the, the area where we are attaching the, the image. So here's the source element of the image for that product or for that device. And then at runtime, we are binding it uh, using the data that's coming in from our XML. And there's a class in my project called device name to image source converter. So this is really a, uh, a dubpf converter class that implements the I value converter. It basically takes the URL, the base URL, and attaches the name of the device that we got from the XML, and then append the .png, and that becomes the source for that image. Really simple, very easy to do. The purpose of this video is to talk about the power of Space SDK and how it opens up network application development, not just to Java developers, but also to other programming uh, languages and platforms, .NET as an example. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ping our team, the developer evangelism team, and we'd be happy to help answer any questions uh, for yourself or for your customers or partners. Thank you for watching.